there is so much content on YouTube these days. But the hardest part is trying to figure out what you're gonna watch and who you should pay attention to. So today, let me talk about a few of the people that I like, a couple of the channels that I enjoy and watch regularly. Hey, what's up? I'm Ken. This is Kenfu TV, and each week I release videos in the martial arts, philosophy, technique, training, that kind of stuff. And if that's what you're into, then you found the right place. I release these videos every Monday, these Ken Learns Ken Fu videos. If that's the kind of thing that you like, I hope you subscribe and hit those notifications so that you know when they come out. And there's a handful of other videos that I'll do periodically, and notifications will make sure that you know when those come out also. So a quick preface, I've broken these videos down into six categories. Those categories are Karate, Jiu Jitsu, Eskrima, Self-Protection, Recovery, and then a bonus category category of channels that I think are just really well produced. I'll make sure to have timestamps for all of this stuff and links in the description. So first up, we've got the karate category. Big part of my background is karate, so that's something that I watch a lot. And when it comes to karate, there is so much out there. You've got all the traditional stuff, 3K stuff, tournament and, and competition stuff, but a place that's pretty near to my heart is the practical karate. And that leads me into Applied Shotokan by Andy Allen. One thing that I really like about what he's doing is he's making the move from more of a 3K karate background. And if you don't know what that is, that's kind of that kata kihon kumite, never the three shall meet kind of style of training. Moving into the practical karate, more the grappling base and, and different functional methods of training. One of the things that I love about what he's doing is as he continues to teach, he's really just putting himself out there. So he's redeveloping his curriculum and he's also teaches inside the school system and he's putting a lot of that out there showing while he works through everything that he's doing there's a lot to be done opening up and, and putting it all out there is really admirable and it leads to really good changes in your training really good informed thought processes so i think it's really cool it's been very inspirational to me especially as i go through that same process myself next up fiore tareglia fiore's videos are very simple instruction on very basic things stances kata things like that some of the clear cleanest looking, sharpest looking kata I've watched. He films them in a way that's just very clean, very easy to see what's going on. He does them both fast and slow and allows you to really kind of take apart and look so for reference material, some of the best. And he also has drawings that he does of positions or even whole katas and things like that that are just fantastic. His his art style is wonderful and I really, really enjoy what he does. Last in the karate category is karate culture. Karate culture is a couple of guys that have been working together for years, training together and teaching, and they are actively pursuing drawing the lines between traditional karate and, and modern combat, not war combat, but fighting, right? So they produce these really awesome some videos showing a crossover between things like MMA, so traditional martial arts, movements found in traditional martial arts, and then showing them in use in the ring and the octagon and all that kind of stuff, which is really cool because most of the guys that they're showing probably don't even realize that they're that they're doing these movements that are encapsulated in karate as well. Really cool stuff. They've also got a Patreon where they've been doing a lot of content. Really cool things. I really think they're worth looking at. Moving on into jujitsu, one of my favorite channels to watch is Kama Jiu Jitsu. There's plenty of technique video out there and when it comes to jujitsu, there's tons just everywhere. The thing that I love about Kama Jiu-Jitsu is not only do they have technique videos, they're just these really great discussions about the philosophy of the training, the history of the training, different principles on how to improve and make progress. Really, really cool stuff. Easily one of my favorites because of that, that deeper knowledge. That's the stuff that I really like and probably why I make these kind of videos where I talk to the camera a lot because it's what I want. I want to watch videos and, and listen to podcasts where people are just deep diving into to philosophy and history and all these things wrapped around the subject that I love, which is the martial arts. Definitely check out common jujitsu stuff for things like that, especially if you're training jujitsu. Now, Knight Jujitsu. Eli Knight has probably one of the best demeanors when it comes to just teaching and expressing martial content and just his philosophy on how this stuff works. His technique videos break down so cleanly and so well that you've probably already seen them because they're so popular because of that. Their popularity does not diminish the quality of the content. Eli has done a lot of stuff through a lot of channels, not just his YouTube channel, but a lot of different other avenues. And I think that's awesome because the way he teaches is easily just one of the most approachable ways to learn jujitsu that I've seen. Last up in jujitsu, we've got Sheepdog Response. Sheepdog Response does a lot of content that branches into a lot of categories, firearms, situational awareness, things like that. But one of the things that they, that they hit a lot is jujitsu. And that's because it has such a strong application.
application to civilian self-protection, military and law enforcement protection and control. The reason that I like to include what they're doing into the stuff that I look at is because they're looking at what is practical. There's the stuff that's going to do really well in competition, but then they're looking at what if you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have a judge to break you up? What if you're wearing tools or you have different situations? I think that stuff is really, really valuable and it happens to be the direction that, that I aim my jujitsu is specifically towards that kind of stuff. The competition stuff is great and there's a great thing for challenging yourself within that, but there's just a different reality if you're having to use this stuff day to day, especially in law enforcement, military, that kind of stuff. Really, really worth looking at there. Really well produced, really good content, comes from a great place with a really great philosophy backing it. You know, ex-military, lots of real life experiences to inform the decisions and the way that they operate and do things. All right, moving on into Eskrima. For Eskrima, one that I've been watching a lot here recently is FMA Pulse. One of the things that you often find with the Eskrima and Filipino martial arts stuff is that everybody's doing their own thing. There are so many, just like dialects in the Filipino languages, there are so many different ones. Everybody doing their own thing, tons of different grandmasters, everybody got their own style, which is excellent, but it leads to a thousand fractured off channels with lots of very specific content for very specific things. FMA Pulse jumps in, having some really great basic information, but then a lot of these videos where they're bringing in somebody for a week and making multiple videos from that style. So you kind of have one place to kind of see and learn and experience a bunch of different styles, bunch of different instructors and kind of learn how to find those people if you want to continue seeing what they do. And it's just great to have a place where that kind of funnels in. A lot of martial arts kind of break apart and, and branch out, but none quite as dramatically as the Filipino martial arts. Next up, Mark Makita. Mark Makita has trained Filipino martial arts for years and years. He's responsible for a good handful of the Filipino martial arts that you've seen in film, especially if you've seen things like Arrow, the TV show based on the Green Arrow, the Filipino martial arts done in that. That was actually how I first found out about him. As I said, I want to know who trained the actors in this, and that's how I found Mark Makita. He's worked with a number of different celebrities, training them and that kind of thing. The reason that I always go back to him, besides just getting to see how beautiful his dojo is, he's just got this mural that he's been doing, putting together for years. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I just saw the other day that he's going to be moving out, so that dojo's going to be closed soon, and he'll be moving into a new place doing something different. So if you wanted to go see that in person, you better go now. But the thing that I love about Mark Makita is he just has this philosophy, this mental headspace that he's coming at this from, that is just very informed. He's an incredibly smart man with a really good understanding of exactly what he's talking about when it comes to the principles and philosophies of what's happening, and his explanations of things are just excellent. Excellent. You could watch a two minute video of Mark Makita's stuff and, and have two weeks to go through and, and just pull apart all of the stuff that is in there, not because he said a lot, but because he has such a well thought out understanding of what's happening that there's just that much to take away from it. And lastly, in the Eskrima category, Scott Shields. Scott Shields does a number of different videos. He's got some jujitsu stuff, he's got different things, but his Eskrima specifically in an Inosanto lineage is what drew me to him. I had an opportunity to go train with Dan Inosanto, which was an excellent and wonderful experience Experience, but it was totally drinking from the fire hose. The, we covered so much material and there was so much there. He presents so much information and knows so much that there's no way to retain what you picked up while you were there. And if you had a drill or something that you wanted to go back to, you know, I've found that Scott Shields' channel has a number of those drills that you can go watch. I found that to be a really great resource to reference back to the material that we went over when I trained with Inosanto in Colorado. All right, next up, self-protection. If you've been watching my channel for long, then you know that self-protection and civilian self-defense is an extremely important area of focus for me. There's so much material out there, but let me point out a couple of resources that I really like. First up is Guerrilla Self-Protection, which is founded by Sean Stark. Sean has been working for a long time to put together a really good foundation for, for the knowledge that you need to properly address the ideas of, of self-protection and human trafficking and abuse and those sort of things, covering things like setting boundaries, as well as things like the, the physical side, where what he's trying to do is really boil it down to the 20% of things that you would do to tackle 80% of the problems. Really simple, easy stuff because his goal was to be able to get this information out to people in a short period of time to try to prepare people for things. And his YouTube channel is just full of really great information, some really great drills and that sort of thing, but mostly just you need to listen to this guy talk and hear what he has to say. Speaking of listening to guys talk, next up is Randy King Live. If you haven't seen it, last week I released a video which was a review of Randy King's Realities of Violence course. Really great material. Go watch that video to get an idea 
of why I think this course is important and what you're going to get out of it. But if you head over to his channel, what you're going to get is a lot of information and a connection to a couple different podcasts, the Talking with Savages and a couple others that he's done. The thing that I think is really great about what he's doing is he's bringing people together and really exposing some, some truths about the realities of this stuff. The martial arts is really good at dramatizing and playing up to the, the Hollywood and the fantasy of martial arts the romantic side of it that we all fall in love with. He's putting a strong effort into making sure people realize that it's not going to go like that. That's not how it is. And if you want to actually approach this from a reality-based scenario, let's talk about that. Here's the information. Really great. Has a ton of material. He releases his stuff supported by things like Instagram and stuff as well. So there's a, a just a huge network of content with what he's doing. And last up is one of a handful of different channels that do this sort of thing, which is Active Self-Protection. They review footage from actual occurrences of violence or other situations situations and coach through them step by step about what went right, what went wrong, what we can take away from these things. And I think this kind of material, if you want to approach a reality-based situation and really have a good understanding of what this stuff is like, then watching footage of things actually happening and hearing people talk about it is critical. It's key. This channel has been going for a while, so there's a number of videos there. If you haven't looked at this stuff yet, there's plenty to go see. All right, next up, let's talk recovery. If you train in the martial arts, then you have been sore. You've probably been injured. You've had a variety of different things and you now know that recovery is critical. If you're new to the martial arts, learn this right away, recovery is critical. So a couple places that I really like to look at for recovery information is first up, Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. These guys have amazing information targeting any number of things and really great stuff that you can do at home as ways to both prevent and, and recover from different types of pain and injury and that sort of thing. Really useful information. I've been watching it for a long time and not once have I ever felt like they're steering you wrong or, or pushing you into some magic cure or anything like that. It's all well backed by good information, really useful. In that same vein, one that I just started watching recently is Spine Care Decompression and Chiropractic Center. That channel has a really long name, but similar and really great information. Ways to do self-care and self-treat different types of pain and, and injury and other things like that that you can do to reduce those kinds of injuries. A lot of information on relieving pain and, and looking at the spine, the skeleton little structure and how to properly address when things aren't right. Lastly in this category is Athlean X. Athlean X is one that I've watched for a number of years now. While it's not necessarily in the recovery category, there's a little bit of that kind of stuff, I would consider this more in the prevention. This channel takes a deep dive look at training, at muscle building, fitness, nutrition, all of that. All of this stuff backed by science and, and a lot of experience to help make sure that your training is safe and smart and that you're getting the most out of it. There's also a really good amount of humor in there, which I really enjoy. And one of the things that I enjoy the most is when he brings out the muscle marker and literally marks up on his body and then moves the muscle that he's talking about and you can so easily see how that muscle is engaging and get a really good understanding of how those motions work and what the mechanic is in play. All of these videos in the recovery category I really like from A, just self-care for myself, but also as an instructor it's a really good resource to look at this stuff and get a good understanding of, of what works, why it works, and what things aren't gonna work because now you have an understanding of what works, you learn what doesn't. So you can approach your martial training better, more educated in alignment with what the body is meant to do, what its mechanics are. That in turn also helps to make sure that your training is safe, that you're using good safe methodologies while you train. I've made a lot of little changes all throughout our curriculum to either maximize power or, or increase safety or just plain address, making sure that you have really good structure. I believe really strongly that structure and using the body properly is the most efficient way to do your martial arts. Lots of really good stuff. Honestly, if you look at any of these videos, make sure you're looking at these because we all go find the fun stuff. We don't always want to pay attention to self-care. All right, last category. These videos fit into all of the other categories, but I wanted to separate them because just the production value was so good. There's so much effort put into what they're doing that it just takes the viewing experience to that next level. Something I really enjoy and can appreciate when someone does it. First up is The Art of One Dojo. These videos cover the gamut. They, they go through all sorts of different aspects of karate and history history and time and effort is put in to really produce these really wonderful videos that have a lot of information. You can tell this person has a ton of information, ton of experience in their life, but then also bring in lots of footage from other things and references and just a really great take on whatever it is that he's talking about that day. Most recently, I've watched the ones that he's done looking at which katas are done in Cobra Kai and things like that. And I think those are super fun and really enjoy what he had to say about all that. I can really nerd out in the martial arts and that was a deep dive into nerdy stuff that we all enjoy. After that, 
moving into Roy Dean. Roy Dean puts together some of the most beautiful jujitsu content I've watched. His attention to detail and his background in recording has led to him producing just this incredible content that's beautifully filmed. The audio is spot on, which is a huge deal. Nobody does that, and they should be. And he obviously has a lot of experience training under Roy Harris for years. He's written a couple books that have been really, really good to read. I've really enjoyed those. And he brings all of that out. In fact, head over there right now to go watch. He's got a couple of his full-length training material that he's produced for sale. He put up during the pandemic so that people had access to it. Really great material. You're definitely going to want to go take a look at that while you have a chance. I don't know if he plans on taking it down later or what, so go look at it while you can. Last in the well-produced category is Marshall Media. Jake Brosnan is somebody that I know personally. I actually, I first got a chance to meet him at that in a Santo seminar because of a mutual friend that we have, and I got to learn a little bit more about who he is, and, and over time I've gotten to know his content. And one of the things that I really love is he, he specifically pays attention to the act of producing a video, shooting very good B-roll, making sure that audio's on point, camera movement looks great, getting good angles on things, all the way down to making sure color grading looks good, lighting is good, really, really good stuff. That's the kind of thing that, that makes my heart happy when I see somebody putting all of this technical knowledge into producing something that can really show off whatever it is that's in front of the camera. In this case, it's martial arts, it's martial media. Right. Always really enjoy his content. He's even released some videos telling people how to shoot better videos for the martial arts. And I think that's really cool. He's also got a podcast. Uh, if you go look for it, I was actually on that podcast a while back. That video never ended up on his YouTube channel. There's a gap in the videos where, where my video was. Don't know anything about that. But if you go find it on Facebook, you can watch it. Can't really provide a better way for you to find it than that. That podcast has had a number of different people on it with really great discussions. Some controversial, some not. All really, really great and definitely worth sinking your teeth into, especially if you're a fan of podcasts. And lastly, a little bit of humor with Enter the Dojo Show. I am certain that everybody watching this is familiar with Master Ken and all the hilarious videos that he's done with a number of different martial artists and making sure that we never forget to restomp the groin. But if you haven't watched that, the show, the actual show, Enter the Dojo, you need to because it's hilarious and we need humor in our life. So go do that. And now at this point, we've come to the end of the list. So that's it. There's a handful of YouTube channels for you to go look at from a number of different categories. Now, this is not by any means a complete list. There are so many different ones out there, so many good ones. It was honestly really, really difficult to choose. I didn't want this video to be three and a half hours long, so I just picked about three or so for each category. If you like this, if you enjoyed this list, then let me know and maybe I will produce a part two of this to show you some of the other stuff that I look at and enjoy. But mostly what I want you to do is drop down into those comments and let me know what channels you really like. What do you subscribe to and what do you really enjoy watching when it comes to martial arts on YouTube? Really looking forward to hearing what you guys watch and what you enjoy. That's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, drop that comment while you're down there. If you like videos like these, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you get those notifications when new videos come out. You can do that right here. Here's a playlist of videos like this, and here's a couple more that you might like. I'm Ken, this is Kenfu TV, and I'll catch you in the next one.